Um, all right, so here is the Marsh Developer update for the, what, mid-chapter, right? The mid-chapter, PTB next week. Um, includes updates for Twins, Blight, Haddonfield rework, updates on some perks and some other stuff. The, uh, the store's pretty cool. So I guess this is like the graphic, kind of cool they're going with now. Um, the Twins is receiving a major change, pretty much a rework. Blight is minor. I took a peek at these Blight changes. They're not quite what I thought they were going to do. And I, I'm kind of afraid what this means for the game. Haddonfield's getting a medium rework, couple perks, and then decisive strike, a major change. New features include store improvements, remove the ability to depip, and archive improvements. Okay, so basically with twins, all right, this is the major thing, and I'm concerned about this killer rework. I know they can fix this or make it so that it's not exploitable, but I am concerned. So three changes off the rip. Reduces the time it takes to switch back to Charlotte to 1.5 was three seconds. Reduces the time it takes to unbind Victor to 0.75 was one. Reduce the time it takes to charge Victor's pounce to 0.85 was one second. So, I believe that might be one of his add-ons as well. He can pounce faster now. Right? We got a buff. Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right? They added two new things. Added the ability to recall Victor at any point while he is unbound. This is what I am concerned about because with the change to Victor, this could be pretty nasty. Yes. Yes. Yes, Jay, thank you. You understand. Everyone everyone is thinking very, very one-dimensional and is thinking, oh, well, she won't be as good at slugging now. No, she will be better. She will be much better. I will tell you why. They also added the ability to change between Victor and Charlotte near a hook survivor. I wonder how that's going to work. Be warned, the anti-face came in. Okay, so it still fills. Um, we made switching between Charlotte and Victor more responsive and given the killer the ability to recall Victor at any time so they feel better to play. This is where I this is where I have issue with. Updated seven add-ons. Victor's pounce no longer latches onto healthy survivors. So what does that mean? Can you kick him? Hmm, let's take a peek. Victor can no longer be kicked after successful pounces, which do not latch. So what does that mean? If Victor hits you, you cannot kick him. You cannot get him off your back. He just falls to the ground and he can try and pounce on you again. You're thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of weird. So how is that going to change? Victor's pounce now latches onto survivors when they are put into the dying state. Other survivors can r crush Victor during this to help the dying survivor. Victor will automatically return to Charlotte after 20 seconds. So basically, he pounces, hits you, pounces, hits you again. You go down into the dying state, and he basically sits on top of your body to kind of lock you in like he does a locker for Charlotte to come get you. All good and well, okay? All good and well. But if she can recall Victor at any point, and this includes when he's latched onto you on the ground, you don't ever need to play anything other than Victor. You can leave Charlotte in the corner of the map, or in the middle of the map, ideally, and just play Victor almost the whole game. Pounce, pounce, recall. Send him out. Pounce, pounce, recall. Send him out. She will basically, for a lot of people who just want to play Victor, which if any of you know how Victor worked before, he's kind of hard to dodge, especially if you're running like Toy Sword, his good add-ons. You just back rev survivors. He's like a demo who, who's faster and has that huge hitbox. So people can just potentially play Victor the whole game. Where is the counterplay to Victor back revving you? He's faster than you. You can't play a pallet or a window because you can jump through them and over them. She'll be better at slugging. She'll be incentivized to slug. Post her up in the middle of the map, just play Victor. Granted, if you're just going for like a full slugging thing, you're kind of losing out on like the hook perks and potential perks and like your build is going to have to be kind of unique. But if you're pulling survivors off gens to come get the slug and you're essentially slowing the game down that way, right? Yeah, I don't know. Like, imagine Victor finds a group of survivors. They literally can't do anything. No. No. Unless you have a good healing building and boons. Right. Right. Which might just further incentivize for the people and buckle up. However, latching onto a survivor on the ground will also kind of counter for the people and buckle up, which would give Charlotte more time to hook them. I think what they have to do is they have to maybe not allow Victor to be recalled at least right away or at all. But here's my thing, though, right? Why would they say, why would they say added the ability to recall Victor at any point while he's unbound if the only time he now latches to you is when you're on the ground? That doesn't make sense unless you can recall him 
when he's latched onto a survivor in the dying state, right? That's the only time you couldn't recall him before is when he's latched onto a survivor on their back. So if you just use your brain, you should be able to recall him when he's latched onto a survivor. Otherwise, why would they add that as an ability? You never recall him before if he was out? Yeah, you could. Well, you could... Er... Oh, okay. So you could never recall him while he was just chilling. Oh, oh, okay. There were restrictions if he was too close to hook. No, okay, so maybe, maybe it might be fine. Maybe it might be fine. I think hopefully what this means is if you have Victor across the map just running around and you kind of want to reset, you can just call him back to Charlotte. I'm hoping that's what this means. And it does not apply to a latched on to survivor on the floor. Wolfie might be right in that the change might be that if you kind of send him across the map and you want to pull him back to you, you can. Uh, uh, Victor will automatically return to show after 20 while Victor's attached survivors are holding survivor in a locker. She gains 10% haste so she can move to the survivor faster. It will be lost prematurely if Charlotte hits another survivor. Cool. Survivors near Victor while he is lashed onto a survivor are no longer revealed by Killer Instinct. That's kind of cool. And if survivors in the dying state. So this is talking about how they're trying to make this killer less slug oriented. Which again, asterisk. Assuming she can't recall him at will when he's lashed onto a survivor. Cool. I'm fine with that. But buffing Victor's only counter is kind of crazy. Yes. Uh, Victor will all be much more effective at injuring multiple survivors. Instead. I, so I still have a slight issue though. Regardless of how easy it might be to down people with Victor. Like... Is this going to be just another situation of Skull Merchant? Is Twins the new Skull Merchant? Where you just send out Victor, and you run up right behind a survivor, and there's not really anything they can do. Essentially, they have to W key across the corner of the map to, like, the other corner of the map, and just sit there. I don't know. Like, is there, is there really any counterplay besides W keying? It's very easy to down with Victor, and they're making it easier. Because... His pounce is now a shorter charge time. Seems like Victor's going to be going to body a crowd. I feel like it will be. I feel like he will be able to. They're making a lot of stuff where the counter is just W key. Yes. Why? 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 Yeah, this will be out uh, next Tuesday, Monica, on the PTB, though. Um, the visual terror radius uh, accessibility setting will now include Victor's grunts. Okay. Um, will now glow red whenever he's not. Oh, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um... Update the visual terror radius to include Victor's grunts to improve accessibility and added a red glow to Victor whenever he is vulnerable to being crushed. That's kind of neat. It, it'll be interesting. I, d I don't know how this is going to work. I, I have a little bit more faith now that maybe you can't just recall him upon downing a survivor, but I think it's just too easy to down survivors with Victor. It's just you run across the map and you hope that you wasted enough time. You can injure a lot of people like Legion, but to down somebody has to latch onto them and presumably stop their snowball. Yes, potentially. The Blight. The Blight. There's really only one change. Theoretically, now this killer can no longer hug tech. Improve collision detection to reduce cases where the Blight slides off objects. So I don't know if you're going to be able to hug tech. It could be frustrating to slide off an object where you're trying to bump into and end your rush pr prematurely. We've improved the collision detection to make the Blight's rush more consistent. This also fixes an issue which allowed the Blight to incorrectly slide along obstacles and lunge around tight corners than intended. According to Mandy, you can't anymore. Okay. So according to a community, man uh, community manager, I think, hug tacking is dead if this goes through. Hug teching is dead. I mean, yeah, collision is something that just is terrible in this game, and they need a lot of a lot of help with. How are we feeling about this? A lot of survivors will say, "Thank God." Okay, chaos likes it. Time for Blight to be even more boring to play as and against. Yeah, probably a little bit. My worry. This is this is where I could have a whole discussion on this, and I'm not going to go into I'm not going to go into a rabbit hole. They are removing essentially some skill expression in the killer that people have been using for a while and that people have figured out. And a lot of people are mad because it kind of makes the killer more simple to play. But that has been the theme of behavior for a while. They remove, they've been removing a lot of skill expression, in my opinion, from both sides and made the game very simple, which makes it more competitive by nature because it just means more people can play to a higher level. And the thing is, like, I think games are more fun... When people are finding out weird things that they're not sure if it's intended or not, blah, 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 blah. But they removed hook techs from survivors. They removed double lockers. They've been removing a lot of survivor. My worry, chat, 
is that they remove CJ's window techs and any clipping through the killer of like any sort. This is this might be like one of those huge dominoes that's being pushed that like it's already getting people talking. They remove demo getting on top of McMillan loops while demo has <laughs> play rate. I, yeah, like Sky Billy they removed. Anyways, let's hope they don't do that. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, I know a lot of people are going to get pissed, and I know like the talk would probably be, well, is Wesker going to be able to rub his face and do all these techs? And it's like, technically, if it's not intended, and Behavior has been removing things that hasn't been intended for like two, three years, it'll probably get removed. But it'll be interesting to see the conversation of what is fair and what is not fair. Because do you think locker saves were fair? Because Behavior never even really came out and said locker saves were never unintended but they were removed because people didn't want to put on lightborn they didn't want a perk to counter something that seemed bullshit and that bought a lot of the killer's time essentially i think what it was is like the behavior probably saw it as it's a tool for survivors that is really hard to counter or very specific and it just wastes too much time it gives survivors too much power right exactly it was a mechanic that was intended but still removed because people found a way to abuse it. These things are actually not intended by the way of design. It's just they don't know how to get rid of them right away. And people are irate that they're getting removed. It's like, well, I mean, that's technically how it was intended to come. You know, it's just, it's interesting. It's interesting to see those arguments play out back and forth. Haddonfield, it's getting changed. Map layout, reduce the overall size. It's been a common theme for map reworks. Reduce the length of the hedges and fences to create more openings. Okay. Um, long and narrow shape and rows of unbroken fences or hedges made getting around very time consuming. Sure, I guess. It wasn't, I don't think it was that bad. Adjusted various houses to reduce the strength of strong loops. Okay, that's usually kind of the only thing we have as a survivor is the strong loops inside the buildings, but reduce the number of houses in the map. Oh no, but all houses you can enter. Don't know how that's going to work. Maybe there'll be pallets in each one and basements and windows, but not broken windows. Might be kind of interesting. Um, balance landing might go hard, especially if every building has a second story. Many houses were closed off, making the map larger with room for gameplay. Um, without any room for gameplay, we have reduced the number of houses that spawn, though each one that remains will now be open and playable. We've also reduced the strength of some of the strongest window loops to be uh, fair and more interesting. Um, they added pallets and lockers along the edges of the map. Thank God that's always needed. There shouldn't really be like true dead zones um, unless the resources are used. Uh, updated street tiles to feature more pallet loops. Thank God. And you kind of get a little bit of a screenshot here. It's not very like big. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you could get streets that were basically bare and dead. So losing the size. Yeah. It's already small. I think behavior honestly is eventually going to make every map almost the size of Cold Tower. Hello. Uh, decisive strike. They're basically doing what we all thought they were going to do. They're basically reverting it to five seconds instead of a three second stun. And then they added a new animation when it's used successfully. So I still think what they should have did to this perk is made the baseline stun two or three seconds and added a second for every gen that remained. And then it still deactivates during end game. So then that way, if the killer tunnels at five gens, they eat an eight second stun. Or a seven second stun, which is brutal. Somebody else in chat also brought up the idea of a potential speed boost. I think this should be buffed a little bit more. Um, because I think if you're going to run a perk specifically to counteract tunneling, it should it should hurt. And it should hurt even nurse. Like it should fucking hurt. Could have made it four seconds and proc twice. True. That's another option. It could proc on every hook. Like every unhook. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see a proc on both. Yeah. Dude, three seconds though, like you can turn around as Demo and Death Slinger or Nurse or Billy or Blight and get a hit. So I, I kind of didn't like the three seconds. It was really, really bad. It felt really useless. Again. Like against some killers, it didn't do anything. And unless you D-strike next to a tile, you can ready up whenever you want, Neo. Um, it just did nothing. I mean, I, I literally did that against the Death Slinger. He turned around and shot me. I, I was like, holy shit. Uh, it's left a ball fast. You go down, uh, could down someone again. Right. And see, the thing is, though, even with a five second DS, what did a lot of killer players say? Um, yeah, I just tunnel people out through DS. They don't care about it. They just ignore it. Just added three seconds to the chase. Yeah. Plus maybe another pickup animation. So like five. Uh, adrenaline changes. This is what everyone was kind of worried about. I was like, homies, don't worry. It's going to be fine. Nothing's going to happen. That's pretty much right. 
It no longer activates if you're hooked when the gates are powered. I, yeah, it just logically didn't make sense. Um, reduce the speed boost also to three seconds was five. Don't really care about that. That's not really going to have much of an effect. It might just feel nicer on paper for killers. And it no longer causes you to wake up when facing the nightmare. Whatever. Um, small ass nerf. Small nerf. Relatively unimportant, honestly, if you ask me. Um, ultimate weapon. They are making major changes to this. A lot of people aren't happy. It now reveals the survivor's aura instead of causing them to scream. Reduce activation time to 15 most 30 seconds. Increase cooldown, uh, which is pretty big. Um, but a lot of people think this is basically just going to overtake Darkness Revealed and replace it. Like, why would you use Darkness Revealed if you can just use this? You think Adrenaline should have been nerfed a long time ago? I'm willing to have a conversation about that, but I highly disagree. Um, unless you're just talking about minor changes. Uh, but yeah, this perk I think is just going to replace Darkness Revealed. It's a nerf. I don't really care. I don't really... Whatever. The perk. Remove the ability to lose a pip. Okay. Let's see why. With emblems being used solely for monthly rewards these days, it feels needlessly punishing to those to lose a pip after a rough match. The quality of life change will make the emblem system less stressful. Who thinks the emblem system is fucking stressful to begin with? Baby Meg? Dude, distortion stonks are gonna go through the roof. Like, unironically, distortion stonks are gonna go through the roof. Um, okay, so emblems, you can no longer de-pip, yada yada yada. Uh, the store, this is kinda neat. They're doing an overhaul for the store. Visual overhaul, new added specials tab to highlight items that are on sale, collections to find cosmetics from a specific collection, bundles containing multiple items at a discounted price. That's dope. So maybe like if you want to get all the cosmetics for a specific survivor that has a shitload, maybe you'll be able to buy a bunch of them for really cheap. That's dope. Love that. W behavior on this. W behavior. Although to be fair, their microtransactions in this game, IMO, are probably some of the best of any game. Can we get an amen? Can we at least... Bro, get rid of your biases. Can we at least say DBD is a dub when it comes to microtransactions and cosmetics? Can we, please? Bro? Is DBD Mobile really getting dancing emotes? Apparently. The feature tab looks good? Okay. Uh, Killer Mori animations can now be viewed in the store. So... This right here basically tells you that there are probably going to be new animations for Mori's being added. Look at that. Killer Mori animations can now be viewed in the store. They wouldn't just do this for Naughty Bear, right? Clearly not. Um, added a weekly gift that can be claimed for free. That's dope. A free gift, free whatever. Sure, why not? This is going for charges unheard of in other games. This is true. True. This is true. Very true. Very true. They have some of the best microtransactions of any uh, game, I think. Um, hasn't changed since 2018. The update makes it easier to find what you're looking for and allows uh, us to bundle content together at a reduced price. For example, it's now possible to purchase an entire DLC pack through in-game store. Oh, that's kind of cool. Rather than purchasing each character separately. That's kind of dope. I love the look of that. Love the look. Love the look. Claimed your free gift down here in the corner. Featured bundle. So maybe you won't have to do a lot of this stuff through Steam now. You can actually do it through the game itself, which is cool. Archives. New Tome and their respective rifts will now open at the same time as the update. Nice. Love that. New Rift Bundle option, which grants the premium. Okay, so you can just buy more. 20 tier head start. Okay. At a discounted price. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, cool. Um, overall, I think a lot of this is healthy. I just watch Twins. You know, need to make sure it's not crazy. Um, the blight could be a sign of things to come. Haddonfield, probably everyone's going to love this because everyone hates Haddonfield. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Overall, I think a lot of the changes are pretty good. I don't really have an issue with most of them. That's it. The end of the song. Next time you'll sing along.